you've been, you have 11 days off since your last pitch. Uh, you threw maybe one, one or two sim innings uh, the other day, but just kind of what's your, your preparation and, and you know, how, how different is that, obviously, having that big of a gap? Yeah, I think that was kind of the point why we did the sim game was to kind of keep it on that six to six day trend of so yeah through a couple innings everything got the pitch count up to kind of where they want, we needed it for that kind of span so um, yeah just going game by game honestly I've, I've been available every game and I think that's just kind of the, the trend we're we're taking it day by day and just trying to win ball games and kind of figuring it out as we go. Gotcha. You're probably used to that a uh, little bit of uncertainty, right? I mean, we've at this is time of the year. We're just it's a, all all guys on deck, so we're uh, we're just trying to all have a team effort and win ball games, and um, there's no egos or anything involved. Gotcha. And one other question: I, I know there's probably a lot of similarities in your stuff as well, but what do you admire and about how Nick Anderson does his job, and and uh, what makes him so good from your perspective? <laughs> yeah, similar stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's it's just. I mean, we we play catch a lot, and uh, just how much work it goes into it, and just how his stuff plays, and watching him throw in the bullpen, and how he came out last night in the game was it was just electric, just blowing fastballs by guys, just incredible stuff. So uh, it's it's great to have a guy like that in the back end of your bullpen. Hey Yarbs, how do you kind of keep yourself stretched out? I mean knowing that you might come in for a one inning type situation or tomorrow they might need, you know, four or five innings out of you or, or whatever it may be. Right. Um, yeah. Like you said, we threw a little over three innings in the sim game the other day. Uh, and then uh, little bullpens here and there to kind of just continue to get the feel for things and just staying ready. Uh, just trying to be a part of the bullpen whenever the phone rings, get ready to go. Um, and whenever they call upon my name, just, however long they need it, I'm ready for. Are you taking good care of Shane over there in the bullpen? <laughs> trying to, trying to. Hey, Ryan, does, um, um, assuming you pitch with length tomorrow, does does the mindset change at all, whether you're up 2-1 or down 2-1 in a series like this where it's best of five? No, you can't, you can't think about that. Um, for me personally, I'm just going to try to go out there and execute pitches and try to execute a game plan and um, – give us uh, as a team the best chance to win. I feel like as a pitch, it's all you can really ask for. Put yourself in good situations. And um, the way I throw, just really try to be aggressive and attack hitters. And is there any advantage to not, I know you faced the Yankees before, but you haven't faced them this year. Does that help in any way for you, do you think? Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that in any particular way, to be honest. Um, you just kind of do your homework beforehand and uh, just go out there and just try to execute. Hey, Ryan, uh, you know, from the Athletic God, uh, I like Mark's joke, but uh, actually I think I, there's something in there. There's, do you ever look to somebody? I mean, you almost seem like unique as a pitcher. Is there somebody right. who can be like, oh, I'm a little bit like Granky, you know, where I do this and this, or I'm a little bit like, is there somebody that you've kind of looked up to that you can learn from when you, when you look at their game? Yeah, I think, uh, I don't think it will come as a surprise to anybody, um, but the guy I really looked up to growing up was Mark Burley. So uh, just to how he really attacked guys, um, kept guys off balance, not the, the hardest thrower, but just got a lot of soft contact and went deep in the ball games. Um, so he was a big guy. And then probably the guy that I look at in the game right now is probably Dallas Keuchel, another guy who just really fills it up, keeps guys off balance and has a great career. So uh, those are the two guys I think off the top of my head uh, growing up and now that I kind of always looked up to. It also looks like your changeup uh, has a little bit more drop this year. Was there any sort of emphasis on looking at your changeup uh, as you went into this year? Um, I think it's just been a feel thing. Um, I don't think anything specific. Uh, I think understanding the counts and the, the best way to use it have been the biggest thing. Uh, and getting, uh, yeah, just putting myself in good situations with that, I feel like would be the biggest thing. Thanks. Yarbs, you're wearing the shirt, man. You, you've seen Charlie do what he does last year. This one, not an elimination game, so maybe a little less pressure for him, but he rises to it. What makes him tick out there in these big moments? It's, uh, it's definitely a guy you want to have in those situations. He's done it a lot before. He's, you know, his uh, playoff resume. Um, and just a guy you can just rally behind. You know, he's going to put you in a best uh, chance to win a ball game. 
Uh, so we're excited to have him out there today. I know Juan just briefly joked about it, but maybe you know Shane better better than most. Uh, your roomie during COVID to yeah. see him go out there in Game One, uh, you know, not not a spot that any of you wanted to see, but for him specifically, it had to feel good to to see him do what he did. Yeah, um, like you said, he he lived with me and my wife during COVID for those couple months, and uh, kind of just play catch with him on a daily basis and kind of see how he's grown from the original spring training all the way to where he's gotten to now. It's, it's been incredible, and uh, he definitely deserves it. He's got, got great stuff. He can definitely help us out of the pen, and um, it was great to see him kind of get that first, uh, first game out of the way, and uh, it's always exciting to see you guys make their debut. Hey, what, uh, was, he, uh, was he a help around the house to you and Nicole? Did you guys give him some chores? I mean, how'd that work? I don't know, man. We, uh, it was weird. Uh, he was more like a little brother than anything, so. <laughs> It was nice to have him around the house, and uh, uh, he's definitely a funny character. I mean, that's like take out the garbage kind of tasks, right? If Every you're once in a while, you know, you'd ask him, and he'd be like, yeah, man, whatever you need. I feel like he'd ask if we needed more help than anything because we're kind of used to doing stuff on our own and not really having an extra person in the house. So it was definitely a, it was definitely a good time. One, one more thing, tidy or messy? What was he? Oh, tidy. Very tidy. Good roommate. <laughs> I haven't said that since like college. <laughs> My gosh. Hey, uh, I'm Barry Bloom from Sportico. Uh, a question for you. I mean, with what's gone on sports wise in Tampa with the Lightning winning the Cup and Brady three and one, you guys are uh, moving along here in the playoffs. What, what's the feeling about that generally as being part of something like this where Tampa has become sports city all of a sudden? It's been great. Um, We've had a long history, I feel like, in the past of having a lot of good teams. And uh, especially being from the area, going to Bucks games a lot growing up, going to Lightning games these last couple of years. Um, it's just been a blast. Lightning, I was uh, super excited for them winning the Cup. They put in a lot of hard work, and the Bucks are off to a great start. So we're just trying to do our part and uh, continue to win some ball games, and we're having a lot of fun with it. A lot of people say to me that, 60 game season, this is kind of like strange year to win the World Series. And my reaction to it is, no, I think everybody's gonna remember the team that wins this World Series because of what all you guys have had to cope with to even get to this point. How do you feel right. about that? Yeah, I feel like, I mean, it didn't matter for us the length of the season. Um, after the year we had last year, getting to game five of the DS, we, we understood what kind of team we had and all the guys that we added that would have been huge for us this year. Uh, we always, every, every, the goal is to always go deep into the playoffs and try to win the World Series. So that hasn't changed. If it was 162 games, 60 game season, it hasn't really mattered to us. We've always had the same goal in mind. Okay, thank you. Stay safe and healthy yeah. and good luck. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Same to you. Anything final for Ryan? Hey, hey Yarb, just one for Ryan. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thanks, Mark. Uh, hey, Ryan, as, as somebody who doesn't cover you every day or really watch you pitch every day, um, this might see Matt of left field, but there's there's something about the back of your baseball card that I wanted to ask you about this discrepancy there. You're you're a really good control guy. You have a really good walk rate, uh, but you led the league in hit batsmen this year. What's that about? Uh, it's It was something where early on in the year, just a little out of rhythm, and especially for me, trying to go in and outside of the plate, like you said, a control guy, not being able to really live in the heart of the plate and be able to sneak some things past guy. Just really living sometimes in the corner and just uh, missing a little bit too far inside. It's uh, nothing too specific, um, nothing intentional about it. It's just kind of one of those weird things that with kind of the history of how kind of pitcher I am to kind of lead that as that is a very, uh, not something I was really thinking about going into the year. Was, was it maybe a result of like trying to be too fine, trying to hit too many corners, trying to be too perfect and things just kind of get away or? Yeah, or um, over maybe like trying to do too much with the pitch, like you said, um, and then just slightly missing inside and obviously just hitting a guy and um, not trying to get any free passes. So definitely not something I was trying to do. Mark, you had something quickly there at the end? Yeah, I was going to ask you, uh, Yarb, just the experience last year of, of being down to the Astros and then coming back and tying it, is, can there be some benefit in that, even like you lost the first game in this series and, you know, so we don't know what tomorrow, if you're going to be 2-1 or 1-2, but can that benefit you guys in some way? Um, 
I would I would think just for the fact that we were like down 2-0 and we took it all the way to game five, we're not going to take any game lightly. And uh, like I said, we kind of know what team we have and um, we're always going to give ourselves a chance. We're always going to think we're going to be able to have a chance to win the ball game. So that's all we think about and, and try to put ourselves in the best chance place to win. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.